And here's part 2 of the Age of Ultron display. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler. Especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Last week, I fixed the Age of Ultron Iron Man figure and built a doomsday trigger. And a wall. Here's all the Age of Ultron figures I've worked on recently. I've got Ultron, Iron Man, Hulk and Hulkbuster. I also did Quicksilver earlier this year. This is still one of my favorite customs. There are more characters involved in the movie, so let me bring them in. From the most screen accurate to the least screen accurate. Starting with Vision, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Wanda. Oh, Quicksilver also came with these extra Ultron Sentry pieces. Now that's a lot of characters. I'm gonna have to build a proper base for the display to look right. I have this thick piece of packaging styrofoam here. I've been saving these for display like this. Normally I use thinner pieces for the display base. But I want this base to be thicker so I can make it look like a floating island. An attempt was made. Oh well. Let me paint it that sandy Sokovia color. It's a bit too bright, so I'm gonna add a bit of brown to darken it a bit. Ah, that looks more natural. Time to glue the wall pillars onto the base. I'm gonna place it on the corner to maximize the space. And for the Doomsday Trigger, it kinda looks like it's floating. So I'm gonna add some chunks of rubble to blend the Doomsday Trigger and the base together more seamlessly. But instead of gluing these pieces directly onto the base, I'm gonna glue them onto a piece of cardboard instead. That way it's not stuck in one spot, and I can move it depending on what's in the scene. Alright. Finally, all the pieces to the display are done. Time to add the figures onto the scene, starting with the Maximoff twins. Okay, this is too mean to Quicksilver. Let me try again. Ah, uh, Wanda! Okay, there we go. This actually looks pretty cool. Too bad Wanda isn't screen accurate in this instance. As for Quicksilver, I really want him to be running with the Ultron pieces behind him just like in the movie. But the obvious issue is that Quicksilver is not going to be able to stand like that on his own. I need to figure out a way to keep him balanced. So I'm going to use my trusty paper clips. I'm going to form a kind of brace around his legs. Be right back. Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. I post quite regularly there from behind-the-scenes updates to sneak peeks to video breakdowns. Top-tier members will receive a DIY 3D mini poster every month. These mini posters look great by themselves, but even cooler next to other mini posters. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. The link to my Patreon is in the description box down below. Okay, here's what I got so far. I used glue gun to further reinforce the paper clips. It looks a little bit like a mess. But it works. Look at that. Still not the prettiest, but there's potential here. So let me work on it a bit more. Okay, this is what I got so far. I added a rock under his right foot. That seems to stabilize the figure. Now I just gotta figure out a way to get the Ultron pieces floating behind him. So I'm gonna run some paper clips up his legs to create that streaking effect and also hang the Ultron pieces. Let me work on getting the shapes right. I decided to bend the paper clips into lightning bolt shapes. It would be easier to hang the Ultron pieces with the irregular shapes. 
Now let me apply a quick wash of light blue over it. I don't want the color to be too opaque. I'm going for a more translucent look. Let's see if this looks convincing on the display. Ah, that looks pretty decent. Now all there's left are the Ultron pieces. This piece here is quite heavy. So it's perfect right here to weigh it down. And let me hang the other pieces on the streaks. There. Not perfect. But I don't want to glue these pieces down permanently. So this will do. As for Ultron, I want him to float in the air. So he can look down on the Avengers. I'm going to use my trusty paper clips again. Luckily, Ultron is relatively light. This is what I come up with. This fork-shaped piece will go right into his back. That way, I can lift Ultron up without any obvious stance. You may or may not have noticed, the middle pillar is actually not glued down in any way. I designed it this way so I can wedge the paper clips in between and hide as much of it as possible. Okay, so this is what the actual stand looks like. It's just a bunch of paper clips and hot glue wrapped around a wooden dowel. This will go right behind the pillar, so it won't be seen. I'm such a genius. This is per- Oh no, oh no, oh no. Ultron's still too heavy. I should have paid attention in my physics class. What should I do, what should I do? Okay, I figured it out. Look at that. Ultron is floating in the air nicely and securely. What I did was, I added more paper clips that go on top of the wall. I love that this stand is not permanently attached to the display, so I can remove it and Ultron whenever I want. Alright, I think all the challenges have been solved. Time to finally put everything together. First, the Doomsday Trigger. Then Quicksilver. Iron Man will go here. He needs to lean on the Doomsday Trigger to not fall. But it makes him look up at Ultron, so that's nice. Now let's add Hulkbuster. Oof, he's big. Gotta make room for him. And of course, can't forget Hulk. Oops, Hulk is too strong. Now for the finishing touches. I've made a few extra columns that I'm going to place here and there to further emphasize damage done to Sokovia. Here's the Age of Ultron display. This looks so good. I love that all the characters are looking at different directions. These are the Age of Ultron figures I have. Kind of funny that Quicksilver and Hulk are the only two that are technically screen accurate. The other three weren't in this scene. That's why I placed Quicksilver at the front. He finally gets to shine for once. What do you think? Do you like this display? Let me know down below. I'm still very proud of my Quicksilver custom. I think it's one of my best work. This diorama looks so dynamic. I can look at it all day. Please enjoy this montage. Okay, another great thing about not gluing the figures down is that I can modify the display. Here is the Hulk vs Hulkbuster scene. This looks a little cleaner, but Ultron was not part of that battle. Neither was Sokovia. Now for the grand finale. Let me recreate that actual final battle scene with all the Avengers. I'm gonna place Quicksilver at the very front again. Iron Man is also going back to his original spot. Otherwise, he's gonna fall off Sokovia. I'm gonna tuck Hawkeye all the way to the back. He's completely not screen accurate, so I'll just show his back. Wanda is also in the wrong outfit, 
so just put her here. Kinda beside Quicksilver. Let's place Cap here. To partially block Wanda. And Thor on this side. Okay, so far so good. Let's put Vision in the middle. So we can be close with Wanda. And middle will go right here, the side cap. Alright, there we go. A little crowded, but it looks pretty neat. Keeping the more screen accurate figures near the front works quite well. Look at that. There's barely any room left. This is pretty awesome though. However, as cool as this looks, I probably won't display this on my shelf. Simply because some of these figures already have their own displays. Like Black Widow and Hawkeye on Vormir, Wanda in my endgame display, Vision in the library. But this does make me want to make a proper Avengers diorama. I've always wanted to do an Infinity War diorama. But there are just so many characters. I'm gonna have to work on that bit by bit. Actually, I've already done a couple of Infinity War figures. But there are still quite a few I still need to do. I'll have to tackle that one figure at a time. Because it's too overwhelming to even think about it. Breaking it down into smaller projects makes it feel way more manageable. And I can focus on making each element great and not worry too much about the final result. Anyway, let's end this with the photo shoot. Starting with the Hulk and Hulkbuster. I really like how clean this looks. There are lots of interesting diagonal lines going on here. So your eyes are constantly moving and looking at something else. Here are the Avengers. This is too busy for me. It's much harder to focus on any particular character. I could have raised a few figures higher to make it easier on the eyes. But this project has taken me a lot of time. I'm kinda drained. The non-screen accurate figures also kinda bother me. I don't own any duplicates so I'm not gonna paint over them just for this display. Instead, I think I'll only display the figures from the movie. Like this. This is still my favorite of the three. There's more breathing room for each figure and the colors are very pleasing to look at. There's a nice range of colors that complement each other very well. And the poses are also easy to read. Except for maybe Iron Man. He kinda blends with Hulkbuster. Too bad he kinda only has one good side and very limited posability. So he's gonna have to stay there. I'm just happy to be able to display Quicksilver properly. Which version of the display do you like the most? Let me know down below. If you're wondering why I didn't make the base bigger, it's because... This is the maximum size that will fit in my display cabinet. I made a few bigger displays, and I ended up not loving them as much because they don't really fit in any of my shelves. So now when I make dioramas, I make sure they fit into my display cabinet. The two Avenger dioramas look so awesome side by side. Anyway, thank you for watching. As usual, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.